Hey guys, I'm going to do some science for you. It's a little different from the cooking and the other stuff that I usually do when I go live. I'm actually going to rely on my background as a scientist. And what we're going to do today is we are going to test for the presence of amatoxin in two different amanitas. This one is Ocreata. This amanita Ocreata is the Western destroying angel. This mushroom would do some very serious damage to me, if not kill me, if I ate it. So I'm not going to eat it. It's okay to touch it, but you should definitely be careful. Um, I touch this with a level of caution, uh, and I'm, I'm going to wear gloves when I do this. This, I'm pretty sure, is a uh, albino Amanita villosa, but I'm not totally positive. And so I'm going to test it for the presence of amatoxin. So let me go ahead, get my gloves on, so I can work with these things without, you know, contaminating them with my own hands or uh, otherwise influencing the process. So, go ahead and put my gloves on. It's been a while since I wore gloves. Um, I like the nitrile gloves better than latex gloves. I think after many years of working in molecular biology labs, my hands started to get a little sensitive when I wore latex gloves for, you know, 12 hours a day kind of thing. So I like nitrile gloves and the black looks, looks cool. I like the purple ones as well. They match my shirt. But, um, okay. So, I was just reading the directions on the Amatox uh, website, and that's the, the kit that I'm using uh, is from Amatox, and it's an antibody conjugated kit. So they figured out a little antibody uh, that will uh, generate a signal um, if amatoxin is present. And so these look very much like a little pregnancy kit. Um, I believe, let me check their website just so I get this right. <laughs> I believe that uh, one, um, one stripe means that it is, uh, you know, that you, you put something on there and that two stripes, just like a pregnancy test, is, uh, is how you detect a positive signal. So, um, hang on, I lost track of my amatoxin uh, instructions here, so I'll just pull it up again. So this is amatox test. If you Google that, you will find it. It's in the title of it. It's, the idea is to have a rapid test uh, that you can look for the presence of amatoxin in a mushroom or if you go into a hospital and you're reporting uh, mushroom poisoning, that the hospital staff can very quickly use something to uh, to look for the presence of amatoxin and then know how to treat you. Because that happens a lot, that people come in for mushroom poisoning and they assume amatoxin, but you know, there's a lot of ways to get poisoned by a mushroom that aren't necessarily deadly and aren't caused by amatoxin. Um, so it's, it's always kind of tough for clinicians and stuff to really know what's going on. And a lot of people don't have the knowledge and even really understand what amatoxin is, or what kind of mushrooms have it, because it's not just amanitas that have amatoxins, gallerinas, lepiotas, there's another number of other mushrooms um, that have an appreciable amount of amatoxin. So this is a pretty simple assay, and for that I'm very thankful, because I don't want to do something that's really scientifically uh, involved. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a small piece of mushroom, I'm gonna place that in my tube. I'm gonna put water about a third of the way up, this little Eppendorf tube, and I'm gonna shake the heck out of it, uh, probably about 30 seconds to a minute. And then I will take a drop of that water and put it on my pregnancy test, and I will give it a few minutes to sort of expose. So um, this works well with urine as well, and I think that's another reason they did this as a thing for clinicians. Um, so let me make sure. So let's see, I'm gonna watch the fluid soak into the cassette. Um, do, do, do. Oh, so, okay, so negative is two stripes, positive is one stripe. Aha. Okay, that's good to remember. So, and what I've got here is I have a control from them. So this has a, a sample of amatoxin positive material. So I have a positive control, which is really important. You want to have like a negative and a positive control when you do an experiment. Um, this is what I'm pretty sure is Amanita ocreata. But again, I've seen some evidence. I've heard people talk about how ocreata can have differential levels of amatoxin. So I'm curious if this one has it. Um, and then there's this Amanita villosa, which I'm assuming is a negative control because I'm pretty sure this is villosa, but it's a white villosa and it kind of makes some people nervous, um, including me. So I don't eat white villosa because I've always been curious, maybe it has some amatoxin. It looks more like the Ocreata than, uh, than a regular villosa, which is, which is very pink and apricot colored. So I'm gonna get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just try to dissect out a little piece of nice clean tissue that I assume will have some mushroom uh, toxin in it. 
So I don't think I need a very big piece here, potentially. And I might even cut it up into a few smaller pieces to get better sort of surface area exposure. So I'm going to put this in my I label as AO for Amanita ocreata. And these tubes have a, I don't know if you can see it, a tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of salt in them. And that salt just helps with the, probably the extraction of the protein because uh, amatoxins are peptides. So those are proteinaceous um, toxins. Okay. So I'll spray. There's really no reason for me to use alcohol. I'm just in the habit of it when I work with wolves and stuff like that. So um, let me go ahead and dissect out a little piece of this villosa tissue. I'm going to get right into the middle of the mushroom so I don't have too many bugs or slugs or bits of dirt and stuff on here. Okay. Again, I'm going to cut this up just a little bit to get increased surface exposure. And I probably don't need that much mushroom tissue. Um, ideally, this you know, an antibody test is going to be fairly uh, sensitive. So you know, between these three things, and again, important to label your tubes, but I've got a little bit of mushroom tissue in these guys. And I'm going to fill this up uh, with water. And whenever I'm working with um, mushrooms and doing lab work like this, I like to create some sort of organization in my zone so I understand what belongs where. And this is, you know, when you're working in a, in a biological safety cabinet or something like that, you can't, you can't move laterally that much. It, everything has to be kind of in and out. And so this is very much, um, I'm going to try to set this up as if I were, you know, in a lab and, and working with the same sort of ethos. So I'm gonna go ahead, try to position this so you guys can still see everything. Um, so I've got three tests. There's my third one. Um, thank you to Richard, by the way, for sending me these amatoxin tests. And thank you to Mikhail for cluing me into that these were finally commercially ready. Um, Cause I'd heard about these a while ago and was really excited, but um, they weren't commercially available yet, and they are now, so you can order them from amatoxtest.com. Um, and this is, you know, it's a good thing to have around. If you've ever worried about your dog eating a poisonous mushroom and you want to know whether you should take your dog to the hospital or not, get one of these. It's a pretty quick way to figure it out. Um, let's see if I can actually <laughs> open this with the gloves on. There we go. So these are just little um, tubes. I'm not doing anything. There's nothing that I'm doing that's sterile here, so I don't need alcohol or need to really worry about you know, these. I'm just trying to make sure that I, I have a dedicated um, stopper for each, or a dedicated pipette for each, uh, each set so I don't cross-contaminate. Okay, so, boom, here's one. And the instructions were, fill this about a third of the way up with water. So I probably don't need an entire mill these are usually about a mil and a half. So that's probably about 500 uh, microliters or half a mil. Right about there. Great. You know, usually when I'm doing live work, I, I play music, but I'm uh, kind of keeping you guys entertained here. So. Okay. So do 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 about there. Okay. Again, you know, when you're doing lab work, it, it pays to be organized. It pays to kind of have all your ducks in a row. Um, I would always tell my undergrad, uh, Peter, when I was at Davis, Peter's a fantastic scientist and probably better better scientist than I, I ever was or will be. Uh, but Peter came in very wide-eyed, very excited, and I taught him the ways of uh, being a grizzled old grad student and uh, and told him all about what I call idiot proofing. So idiot proofing is, is something I do in a lot of my life because <laughs> I am frequently an idiot. I screw things up all the time, uh, especially when it comes to order and uh, doing things in a logical way. I'm mildly dyslexic, which is something I've only really realized as an adult, but it made a lot of sense to me because I was like, why when I write do I start words with like the second or third letter of a word and have to go back and write the first one and like just that's the way my brain works and sometimes it helps me be a better communicator because I'm trying to be very straightforward so that I don't get confused. I'm idiot proof in the way that I talk to people uh, in real time and ideally helping them understand some of the complex things that I'm talking about. And so that's what I'm doing right now. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shake the heck out of it. So I can shake my hand and you can just do this for like 30 seconds. Um, but because I'm extra, um, I went upstairs and pulled out, uh, pulled out this shaker. And I picked up at the UC Davis um, surplus store. So just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go. Let's see if we can get it to work. So oh yeah. That's a vortex. Yeah. So for Epi's For Epi's it's good to get it kind of up on the side and it'll really you'll see it shaking. Um, do you need to do this? No, absolutely not. I'm just doing this because I can. It's a it's a flex. All right. We're set. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. And so it's out. And again, I'm going to have a dedicated pipette for each one of these so I don't accidentally cross contaminate between the samples. Um, for anyone who's curious about what these test costs, I don't know. Richard sent these to me for free just to try out. I, I was waiting for this exact moment when I found Amanita opriata and Amanita velosa. But I'm pretty sure if you go on the Amatox test kit or test website, uh, they'll have prices on kits. I don't think they're that expensive. You know, it's, it's meant to be uh, something that's accessible for people to buy and potentially have them around uh, as a way to you know safely test things. So, okay, um, moment of truth. It's kind of scary. I'm, I'm nervous. I, I want. The, I really want this to work, and I, I'm pretty sure it will. I'm just like, you never know. Science is science, right? So. So here's our um, here's our control tube. So this is probably a good one to go. I know that this should create a positive signal, and this isn't particularly quantitative in the sense that it's only it's a one bar or two bar kind of thing. So it's not a quantification of like a, a prognosis how much of this amatoxin is present. It's just is it there, yes or no. Um, well, let me check the website just to see the amount of um, drip three drops. Okay. Three drops into the cassette, so I don't need I don't need much. I've got about you know half a mil in each one of these. So okay. and I can I can see that there's you know some significant amount of mushroom tissue in here because it's changed color. So maybe one, two, three. And now that this amatoxin's in solution, it's in liquid, I'm gonna be very careful with it. Because um, at this point it could potentially, you know, move through the skin, or get ingested, or or even go in my eye. So again, I probably should be wearing safety glasses, and I have some. Pretend I'm wearing safety safety glasses. That's that's my PPE. Or just go like this. Um. <laughs> okay. I'm being careful. I swear. I know my parents might be watching, so don't worry about it. That's fine. I'm fine. Um. And just shake that, get a little extra extraction. Okay. So, and again, you guys, I don't know if you can see it, but the way that this is worked, I'm a little more sketched out by the white ones, looking so much like Ocreata uh, that I don't eat them, just out of, out of an abundance of caution, even though I can follow the morphological cues of Amnita velosa, and I'm pretty sure it's velosa, not Ocreata, but still, it's white, and you could easily confuse it. So, so one, two, three. Okay, so I'm gonna let these continue to diffuse down uh, and then I'll tell you guys a little bit about Amtox. So actually here's, here's the first one. You can see it, there's a single band 
So this is our positive control. And one band means there is amatoxin. And, and we knew that. I mean, this is, this is the, the positive control that I got from amatox test, um, which means that somewhere they have a whole bunch of amnitas with amatoxins in them. Um, so that's good to see. And it's, that's very cool. Um, amatoxin is, is really scary stuff. So it's a, it's a peptide that's in this uh, Amanita ocreata. It's also in uh, Lepiotas and Gallerinas, and it's, it's probably the most deadly toxic toxin that's in mushrooms. There's a lot of different toxins, but this is the one that will kill you if you eat it. Um, so it's very good to be able to recognize these Amanita ocreata because um, you really want to avoid them. And I, I did a whole video on how to recognize them uh, last year, so you can scroll back in my IGTV history, or you can check it out on YouTube. Uh, just Google the Western Destroying Angel, fascinated by fungi, you will find it. And, uh, and you know, the, the things to really look for is this has sort of this white ochre, brownish, orangey top, and, and that color is, is the least robust part of being able to identify an ochreata. Um, the best thing for me is to be able to see that the stipe itself is solid and not hollow inside. So if anyone watched that Amy de Vernica Cora video I posted the other day, it had a nice big uh, hollow pore in the middle of the stipe. Um, it doesn't have any uh, striations on the edge compared to what a Vernica Cora or a Amanita Velosa looks like. It doesn't have a thick white skull cap. Um, it generally has a more well-defined sort of annulus or skirt. And there's a few other sort of characteristics you can use, um, particularly to this mushroom stains orangey yellow with, uh, with KOH. So th there's a couple of things you can do in your toolkit to identify this mushroom. Um, and, you know, exercise extreme amounts of caution. This mushroom kills people in California every year. Um, people confuse it for another edible species. People from Southeast Asia particularly think that this is a Volvarella species. It's not. It's deadly. So. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I'm looking at my kits here. And let me label them. So if I pick them up, I'll, I'll know which one's which. So that's supposed to be positive. This is my um, Amanita ocreata, and this is the Amanita velosa. Um, I am not sure if they sent me a positive or a negative kit now. I'm pretty sure they said it was a positive kit. Um, but I am a little confused because I'll show you guys what I'm looking at here. They all have one strip. So, hi guys, um, one strip, which would mean that they're all positive, except that one of the strips for Amanita ocreata is offset, uh, which leads me to think that it is a, it might actually be a positive result. So, let me show you guys what I'm looking at here. Sorry, it's kind of hard to hold them all up. Um, so here's, this is supposed to be the positive, but the positive looks like the Amanita velosa. You can see that the Amanita ocreata has, um, has another strip that's slightly higher than the other two. And that makes me wonder if that is actually the positive signal. Um, in theory, both the, I mean, the Amanita velosa should only have, should have two, two bars. Um, because it's supposed to be only one one bar as a positive result. But I mean, this could be saying, in theory, that Amanita, the white Amanita velosa also contains um, amatoxin. But I, I don't think that's what's going on. So I'm pretty curious about this. I'll, uh, I'll take a, a better sort of up-close picture so you guys can see what this looks like in real time. But I'm pretty interested. Uh, I'm really excited that there is a quick and easy test. You know, you guys saw me do it here. It's not that hard uh, for looking at amatoxins. So, you know, you can order your own set of sets from amatoxtest.com. Uh, it's based on work that was done academically, and then somebody took, you know, the conjugated antibody and commercialized that into one of these little test uh, test kits. So, yeah, I'm pretty interested. I got to go. Uh, I got to go read the website again. But again, here's you know, here's the kinds of strips we're looking at. Um, these are, in theory, both positives. It does look like the Amanita ocreata is offset, the bar is offset, which makes me think that maybe the top bar is actually the 
positive result and the bottom bar might just be like the negative result. So, um, you know, this is pregnancy test for deadly toxins, basically. Kind of cool. Well, I'm going to go. Um, it's been fun. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with me. And uh, if you want to learn more from me, check out my website, fastenedbyfunga.com. I've got cool merch, original T-shirts, uh, dish towels, leggings, all sorts of good stuff with, you know, mushroom mushroom art. There's, there's one of my favorites. Um, I've also got a frequently asked questions tab where you can answer a lot of the basic questions that you have about mushrooms and how to get into foraging, what resources to learn with, um, some of my other favorite mushroom accounts on there. Um, yeah, follow me, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, um, iNaturalist, Pinterest, uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, I may soon be starting an only fungi, which will be interesting. But, you know, why not hang out on every platform? Could be fun. So, anyhow, thanks, guys. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye-bye. Okay, YouTube. I'm going to say goodbye to YouTube. Bye.